Hi everybody, this is uh, an AKG D130. Um, I've added a volume pot and it's running through an impedance converter, which is just a little gizmo that plugs into the amp and you plug the lead of the mic into it to bring it up to high Z. It's a, it's a low Z, low impedance mic. And the range on this is 50 hertz to 12,000. And it was given to me by a friend of mine who had it for micing up his Leslie cabinet for Hammond. Uh, didn't think it responded very well to the uh, spinning horns. But uh, as a heart mic, I quite like it. It's very comfortable to hold. I've got small hands, but I can get my little finger around there nicely. And it's... Uh, Dogs on phone this morning. Nice microphone. Um, I reckon that's on par with the Green Bullet. 520 uh, DX one I've got, which is about four or five years old. Um, I reckon it's better than the Honey Blues Blaster, which is about 12 years old, and they cost a fortune still. And uh, very similar, I think, to the uh, I've got a couple of Shaw Unidyne 515 Bs. Um, at the moment, it's running. You can't see it's out of shot. It's running through the 30 watt electronic. Um, I've got the impedance converter set to high, but I've gone into the low. Um, that amp has a, a high and low input, and I've gone into the low input so I can drive the amp a bit harder without feedback. But it's um, it's it's a nice microphone. I'll just uh, plug in one of the unit irons. If you just excuse me a sec. Give you a comparison. Well, I haven't compared to myself yet. Uh, let's see what this sounds like compared to one. Compared to the unit iron. Sounds good. These these are another good mic you can pick up. Uh, the unit iron five one fives again low Z. It's uh, I really don't think it's it's necessary to spend fortunes on on microphones. That's my own feeling. I find that the dynamic cartridges are pretty good. Um, I've got another couple of cartridges that I'm. I'm uh, going to build into something for a mic. Um, what I've been looking for is an impedance converter that goes jack to jack rather than XLR to jack. Because when you put a female um, socket into the microphone, the, the, X, the uh, quarter inch jack ones take up a lot less room than the XLR ones. Um, the harmonica, that's a, that's a I own a blues harp in C. Again, um, it's a pretty awful harp when it goes out of the box. I've never found a good one. This was one that was given to me. Um, a couple of reeds that were iffy, which I changed, and the, the comb's been very heavily varnished and then flatted back to get rid of all the, the grain markings out of it. The, the tines have been uh, rounded off on the front. And uh, we embossed the reed, etc., etc. And it is now there's also a, a screw down through the centre tine to keep the reed plates nice and level when you fit them. And it now plays very nicely. But one thing um, I've been meaning to mention for ages and keep forgetting is about the discomfort you get from these overlapping reed plates. And it's not just the fact they protrude over the cone, it's this angle here between the the cover plate and the reed plate. 
I've done a little drawing. I hope I hope this explains it well enough if we can get it into into shot. But the top one, the, the the curved bit is the cover plate, and then the protrusion, the right angle protrusion, is where the re, where it meets the replay. And that's where the discomfort is. And what you want to try and achieve is that angle on the front of the replay, which is quite simply done. Uh, I mean, you have this on the paper on something flat, obviously. Um, this is a Lee Oscar Lee replay, but it'll do. And it's just a case of taking it at an angle to reduce that, that lip between the cover plate and the replay. And the test is that way. And if your lips will run smoothly over that joint between the cover plate and the replay, it makes a much more comfortable play. Um, let's just try this uh, this um, AKG on a on a different uh, key. That other half was a uh, was a C. This is an old A Pro half, a pre MS one. <laughs> It's, it's an, I think it's a nice mic. I find it very comfortable to hold. And in fact, for the last couple of weeks, this is all I've been using when I've been out playing. And uh, it's, it's a nice, nice microphone. Um, I'll just get the, uh, the impedance converter and, uh, and show you. I was using this type, but the trouble is this cable floats freely in there, and every time I use it, I ended up having to resolder it all in there. This one is uh, just unplug it. Is a Maplin's one, and as you can see, it's solid and it's switchable between high and low impedance, and I find this is, uh, I don't have to keep repairing this every time I use it. Um, what I have been looking for is a jack to jack, as you can see it's bent. The first time this was out, the guitarist went back and trod on the cable and bent the, uh, and bent the quarter inch jack. So you really need to, when you've got this into your amp, the amp I had this in was a front fit fitting one. You need to run the, ca the cable through the handle of the amp and then plug this in so any tension goes on the handle of the amp and not on the converter. Um, I have found somewhere that will supply a quarter inch input. So I've got to go and get one of those this week and try What I'll do now is, uh, that was in the Rocktronic 30 watt. I'll just plug this into the, into the Harley Benton. Now this is the uh, the AKG and the Harley Benton, and uh, since the the Alnico magnet um, toner set up in there, it's even bassier than the the thirty watt one. <laughs> But uh, we're running out of time. There are some good mics out there that you can pick up at reasonable prices. You've got to sort of stick your toe in the water and see how it suits your amp. 
but uh, it can be a lot cheaper than the pound of money they're asking for some of these so-called half-ounce. I've got to go, we're running out of time, bye-bye.